Hey everybody. So today we're going to talk about trends. And the way I kind of wanted to approach the topic is to sort of clump trends and pieces that I think go with trends together in the same place. Um, I don't want to make an overview of trends of 2017 because there are so many things that are going on. Uh, for instance, stripes, as I'm wearing today. But, you know, there are so many ways to interpret these kinds of uh, fashion statements that I really just want to stick to categories. And for me, one of the important categories for this spring and summer is going to be, first of all, pastels. And for me, since I do a lot of capsuling in my wardrobe and I'm very cognizant of what I buy into my wardrobe, um, I don't mind spending a bit more sometimes on pieces. But I really want those pieces to be uh, have longevity, really stretch out in my wardrobe, go with a lot of other pieces. So I try to shop with outfits in mind, with things in mind. So it's more difficult for me to incorporate very trendy pieces in because they just don't go with things I like. And most of the time, a lot of the trends um, that come out aren't really something I'm interested in in the first place. However, this spring there are a few things that I was very interested in, one of them being pastels, and my choice really went into, um, into the pink, powder pink territory. Uh, it's my favorite kind of pastel color, it turns out. I've been a tomboy um, before I hit maybe the age of 21 or so. Um, and uh, after that, I really haven't experimented with pink. It's never been my thing. Um, so I wanted to find a way to work pink in a non-juvenile luxe way. And I really found that pink is very wearable color and it's super flattering. So I bought a few pieces to go into my wardrobe, to go with other things in my wardrobe, and to sort of make a statement, also to make it uh, possible for me to do tonal looks, which I kind of uh, am completely in love with, which means you choose a color and within the tonality of that color, you create an entire outfit in one color. It's quite a statement and it can look comic and weird, but when it works, it's perfect and it's a knockout kind of look, which I really, really like. So let's talk about pink. Uh, first thing I want to mention is quite an interesting buy for me, a little bit of an outside-of-the-box thinking. This is a really beautiful powder pink, sort of very muted pink slide. Um, it's by uh, Pertini, which is a Spanish leatherwear brand. It's my first time buying from that brand, and I found them to be quite impressive, actually, because the quality of the shoe... Um, of course, I haven't given them, you know, the years of wear that I normally would yet, but I can tell um, already that the quality is really quite good um, and quality to price ratio is very decent. So uh, this is a full leather shoe. Um, everything about this shoe is leather. We have beautiful, very soft uh, leather upper. And you can see how soft and luxe the leather is because you can see that they were able to tie it into knots and drape it around the shoe. So you, that tells you how moldable and soft and beautiful the leather is. Um, so this is a bit of a sort of architectural draping technique they did in the front of the shoe, which is all the visual interest there is to these slides. Um, beautiful knots. I'm glad it's not bows. Bows could be a little bit over the top, but the beautiful knots really give it a sort of luxe but yet relaxed and cool vibe. Um, soles are leather. The inside of the shoe are leather. It's really quite all very, very nice. Um, the only thing is these shoes aren't really... Um, sewn at the sole here, but they're rather on glue. I do prefer things to actually have stitches in them. I'm not sure why, um, but these these are quite beautiful. They're very well made. I see no defects whatsoever. I try to look for defects every time I buy something. These were perfectly made. Um, the leather is luxe and beautiful, and they're neutral enough to actually go with anything at all in my wardrobe because they can kind of pass for tan, although they are light dirty rose color. Um, so these are really quite beautiful. The second pair of shoes that I had purchased for this season are these Bottega Venetas and these are sort of nudie pink ballet fluffs. They're the more, most classic ballet cut um, you can think of with sort of round toe but it's kind of like round almond. It's between round toe and almond toe. 
Um, and what attracted me to these was really the sort of leather work here. Of course, Bottega Veneta is famous exactly for leather work. Their perfumes aren't bad either, but um, they're, they're really famous for precisely this kind of leather work, the woven basket um, sort of feel, and they're beautiful. They're so classically Bottega Veneta. Uh, they're very comfortable, of course. They're padded um, on the inside. They're 100% leather as well. And uh, the, of course, the bottom of the shoe is also leather. These guys are, of course, stitched. What else would you expect from the brand? It's very, very beautiful. It's very meticulously done. Um, what I really like is the fact that these mold to my feet like no other. They're very, very comfortable. Um, I can walk in these forever. Of course, the quality is completely su superb. You can see um, the plethora of stitching is just absolutely perfect and flawless. And that's what you get with Bottega Veneta leatherwear, be it bags, shoes, belts, whatever they make in leather is going to be absolutely meticulously perfect. Um, what, I need, what I need to do for both of these pairs is actually take them to the cobbler and have them sold. Because um, whenever you're buying leather soles, you know, it seems like a really great idea and they are extremely comfortable, it is true. But unfortunately, they're very slippery because um, they're quite smooth. They don't have anything to catch you and you kind of slide, especially if you, of course, most of us will work in buildings with very smooth flooring and they'll just cat they just won't catch and you'll you'll slide this is uh, not ladylike or fun and can be quite traumatic so my plan is to sole these before i really start wearing them spring is not quite upon us in montreal it's still cold and things are messy outside another pair that i actually bought last year but will transition into this trend perfectly are these napoleoni um sort of well, they're basically flats, but they have a tiny heel. Uh, what attracted me initially to these shoes is the uh, the toes. I really love a pointed toe. And they have this lovely detail in the back, the shiny metal in the back. And that was super trendy last year, so that's why I bought them. But since they happen to be in pink suede, they transitioned beautifully into this year. They have a couple of buckles. What I have to say about Napoleoni, this is an Italian brand, they do have quite nice quality leather. What I have to say is that their forms are quite narrow, so if you have a narrow foot, that's going to be perfect for you. Um, I have a wide foot and it pinches like a bee. I really don't like how these um, how these feel. I had to break them in for a while before they became even wearable and still they're not all that comfortable to wear so I wouldn't recommend anybody with medium to wide foot um, Napoleoni brand. They, their shoes, and I've tried a lot of them, tend to be quite narrow so you know I warned you. The last pair of shoes I wanted to mention are boots and I've worn them already. Now this was a complete budget buy for me because I wasn't entirely sure that I wanted to go for the Stuart Weitzman's. Um, that's an investment. So I wanted to get something a little bit less pricey to make sure that it was for me and then in the future perhaps invest into these. This is the Catherine Melandrino, um, sort of faux suede over the knee flat boots. And I was interested to sort of try the over-the-knee thing. I have the slightly over-the-knee Cole Haan boots in black leather, which are my favorites, and I wear them to death. But these weren't like the thigh highs. They were, um, they were rather just over the knee, and I loved that. But I wanted to go for the, you know, the super high ones just to see what it was like to have them. Um, also, I really wanted something with a... A tie in the back so they can be adjustable on the thighs in case they're not quite perfect. These aren't really stretchy so um, I was a little bit hopeful that they would be. They aren't. I ordered them in two colors. I ordered them in this sort of dusty pink and I ordered them in gray because those are the colors that are currently dominating my wardrobe. I have the navy, the black, the white, the pink and the gray. So I have to talk about the quality. The quality is not top notch. The toe is sort of a rounded almond toe, I would say. Um, the sort of heel is tiny. They're quite flexible, quite comfortable. The comfort wasn't the issue. Um, but the material itself is 
not super cheap, but it's quite obviously does not resemble suede or velvet or anything luxe. Um, it is sort of faux suede, but not very, um, not very luxurious faux suede, rather cheap feeling. It looks okay on the leg. I will wear them and probably wear them out since the quality is not great. I suspect that, you know, if it's a suede shoe, of course, the suede will wear beautifully. But this kind of material, you know, this is fabric, so this is going to definitely be destroyed in one season. I have no doubts about that. Um, therefore, I think these are fun if you want either to try a trend or you don't mind destroying your shoes in one season. Um, these are not going to hold up, I can tell already. I actually like the grippy sole that they have here. This is much safer than some of the leather smooth soles that I've spoken about previously. Pros are the price. It's quite affordable. The style is very, very classic and basic. The, um, the shoe is very comfortable. It does accommodate. It's very soft. It's fabric, so it does accommodate for my my wide foot. It does fit over my medium to bigger calves um, and on me I am 5'3". It reaches to maybe one third up my um, thigh. The stitching is not the stitching is not fantastic. Like I can show you what I mean. Of course if you're going for a more affordable brand you're gonna have you might have things like that. You know? There's a string sticking up. Um, generally, it's not too bad. The stitches aren't coming apart anywhere. The construction itself is not atrocious. They do have the coveted tie, which means that you can adjust it around your thigh because nobody's thighs are exactly the same size. Um, the material is not at all stretchy, which is for me a con. It will not wear well because the fabric is kind of cheaper in terms of the feel of the quality. The zippers are good. I think the zippers are sturdy. I think they will hold in fine. So the another major con is that, of course, I don't think the longevity is going to be anywhere near um, some of the maybe higher end boots of that style because, well, you have fabric. It's in, in a season, it's going to look unwearable. It's going to wear down in a bad way and it's just not going to be flattering. Yes, I don't think that this is a, an investment piece, but I do think they're fun to try if you want to try out a trend and see if it's for you. Of bags, I have two choices here, a smaller and a bigger bag. So this is a this is a bag that I bought a couple of months ago. It is from Skagen. Skagen is a Scandinavian brand. Um, they do leather wear, they do watches, they do some clothes, they do sunglasses, I believe as well. Um, their, their aesthetic is very minimal, very minimalist, approachable, and the quality is actually excellent. I love their watches. Their watches are really, really nice, and they're very fairly priced. So is their leatherware. Um, so I, I, I really cannot fault this brand. This, was, this is actually, in my opinion, an excellent uh, piece in terms of uh, price per quality. Uh, because the quality, the stitching, just the design of this piece is uh, looks much more expensive than it is in reality. The leather is luscious. It's very buttery. It has a little bit of texture. Maybe you can see. It's smooth leather, but it has a tiny bit of texture, which of course is really good because it'll give this material uh, quite a bit of longevity as uh, super, super smooth soft leathers will scratch and wear down much easier. Also another perk to that kind of construction, that kind of a leather that they chose to use, is the fact that it'll hold its shape completely because it's an envelope kind of double envelope bag, you can tell. It uh, is quite slim and very, very flattering. The size of it is sort of small to medium, between small and medium, I would say. Um, the size is perfect. It, it's kind of a size of a, an iPad. iPad goes into it, but uh, maybe a laptop, of course, will not. Perfect for people who really enjoy this minimalist style. So let's talk about the design itself. We have this envelope bag that does transform into a lovely um, sort of uh, top handle carry bag. Or if you want to use it as a clutch and hold it in your hand, you can because these do uh, come off. The strap is um, adjustable, first of all, and second of all, removable. Um, it's on two sort of um, 
studs here that you can that are functional and here you have another set of these studs with an adjustable strap the strap itself is nice and soft it's very sturdy the ends are sealed with sealant so it's very smooth there are no rough edges whatsoever the top handles are stitched to a single stitch on each side. They are sealed as well. It's very comfortable and lays beautifully in the hand. Another thing I like about my bags, I basically don't go for a lot of very obvious branding. In my collection, I only have one Louis Vuitton in Damier Bain print and um, I don't have any other bags that are very obviously branded because I just not my style, that's not what I like. We have here the Skagen sort of um, symbol. We have this hanging, hangy bit that is decorative, but I'm going to remove it. I'm not gonna wear it. I just forgot to so far. Right now I see it and I think it needs to go. And there is a printed Skagen sort of uh, name down here. Um, the color is very lovely powdery rose. Um, it comes across, I think, pretty fairly on camera. That's kind of how it is. Um, in the back, you can see the continuation of the stitching going on, but this is not a functional pocket. In the front, we do have a functional pocket. This, is, this button is actually a magnetic closure. You have a pretty decently sized front pocket with this bag. On the inside here, only this, the whole bag is lined completely except the front of this pocket. This is raw leather here. So we can close it back up. It's a magnetic closure, therefore it's easy to use. Small details are very important to me when it, go, when it goes into bags. Um, and I really appreciate the small details of design that the brands put into their things. So here we have a magnetic sort of closure again, no zipper, fully lined inside with sort of green gray lining. Here we have a strap that opens up and you can hook your keys or whatever else you want on there. Um, we have double pocket here, a pen holder on this side. And again, we're talking about details. How nice is it? They again have the printing of the brand on the inside pocket where nobody can see it. It's nice when you have those details. On the other side, we have a similar kind of a pocket, again, fully lined, this time completely empty, and uh, a zipper pocket inside for valuables. Another zipper pocket is in the middle of the two envelopes of the bag. Um, it's kind of a heavy duty zipper. You can probably see, I'll show you. Look how um, sub sort of substantial this zipper is. This is a heavy zipper. So um, the zipper has not a tassel, but I guess just a holder, a pull tab. Um, and it's very, very secure. The zipper is kind of a bit industrial in feel, which I really like because I think it goes with the minimalistic design of the bag. Again, adjustable, very comfortable, easy to wear, and very versatile little envelope bag. So I thought that was a really great find, and Skagen really impressed me in terms of their design, in terms of the details, in terms of the quality of the leather, and the quality of the workmanship, the craftsmanship um, on their leatherware. So I'll definitely look to Skagen in the future for bags. They did a very good job, good enough to impress me for sure. Another bag that I wanted to mention is this beautiful sort of uh, ballerina pink Cole Haan purse. This is a tote. Um, it looks like this, quite a large one, easily fits my 11 inch laptop, probably a 13 inch, I'm not sure, I haven't tried to fit a 13 inch in here, but it's just so damn comfortable. So I have to say about this particular bag, uh, I can give you a lot more feedback on that bag because I actually own this bag. Uh, two years ago I bought it in a beige. So when I saw this particular color of the same exact bag that I already own and love, I snatched it up because I'm going to tell you all about why I enjoy this particular bag and um, hopefully give you a good idea about uh, what kind of a brand Kohan is. I really like Kohan. Kohan is an excellent brand. They do great leather wear. They do very good bags. Actually, the quality uh, versus price, again, is very impressive. Their quality is better than what you get 
for the same kind of price. So I would really definitely rate Cole Haan quality over say a Michael Kors or maybe a Kate Spade, although they're within the same kind of price range for, for me. I think they're better quality. Also the fact that uh, it doesn't have MK all over it for me helps, <laughs> I like that. Um, and I have to say that the purse that I own in beige, the exact same purse as I bought in pink, um, wore excellently for two years that I wore it. I got it as my summer purse, it's in beige, it's very um, easy to wear and I ordered it online without really knowing much about Cole Haan bags. So when I bought it, I was extremely impressed with the styling, with the quality of the leather, with the quality of the craftsmanship, the hardware. It held up beautifully in the two years that I've owned it. Um, there is no fading or any kind of fraying on the handles, and this is this is the handles that you use. Um, I also have to say that I don't baby my bags. I use them. I really put them through the wringer. So with my older bags, I can definitely tell you about the good brands that make bags that hold up because that's what I buy and that's what I want. want. You know, I'm I'm a bag destroyer. They go through hell with me. Um, and that particular beige Kolhan tote uh, wore beautifully, there is no fraying, although the tote does not have feet, which was initially a very big con for me, there is virtually no corner wear at all, and this is shocking because I do throw it on the floor, I do throw it on the chair, like it's always rubbing against stuff, but the wear on it is really impressively minimal, so the lack of feet apparently was not a deal breaker for me. Um, it fits a lot. It does have, if you like a lot of pockets, this is not the bag for you. I really like sort of throwing things into the bag. Um, pockets aren't as important for me. I like bucket style bags even. And so, um, so this one was really sort of, uh, a good find, a very, very functional purse, especially for a working woman. Now, why do I think this is appropriate for a working woman? This is not, this is, this sits somewhere in the middle between a structured bag for work and a hobo purse that is soft and comfy and just luscious. And this is kind of in the middle. I think it still passes as a work bag because the structure of it, I have to say, does not sag. The bottom of it is, although it's soft, it's just sewn in a way the construction is such and the quality of leather are such that it doesn't really sag into a shapeless blah. It retains its shape reasonably well, um, especially given that it's not a super, super structured bag. Um, but rather a soft one, there's still shape to it, so it does pull you together and complete a work appropriate outfit very well. Um, and I did like that it was not crazy amount of hardware, it wasn't distracting me with chains or zippers or whatever else so some bags do have. Now the ballerina pink is, of course, depend it depends on whether you like ballerina pink, but they come out with this purse in so many colors that I think it's really a good find. So let's go through the hardware. This particular hardware is gold. I do believe my beige one is gold as well. The gold hasn't tarnished, hasn't well, it's scratched a little bit, but it hasn't scratched terribly, and it held up very well. It nothing came apart nothing came loose um, and again I, I have to stress that this although looks like a pretty shiny gold that is going to just go to hell very quickly it didn't it, it was um, it held up very well no tarnishing no peeling nothing really extreme very minimal wear um, it has sort of the gold printing Cole Haan uh, in the front and I have to say that that hasn't rubbed off either that stayed intact on the purse uh, for two years of wear and I do wear it each side so it does rub against the clothes and it's uh, printed there well enough that it did not come out um, again very sort of simple design what we see inside is three compartments it opens wide, you can see how much space is really in that thing. It has navy blue lining, again, very simple, nothing outrageous or interesting. Um, here we have a single open pocket. We have a zipper pocket with a pull tab, and we have 
um, a card pocket here with uh, the same kind of printing that goes on the front of the purse. Um, the middle pocket is a zip pocket. It's a very good quality closure. It holds extremely well, no wear and tear on that. Um, this pocket is somewhat smaller, but enough to sort of um, host any kind of uh, valuables that you might be carrying. And the third pocket is another big one. It's sort of bottomless pit of bag, really. And it has this double sort of cell phone slash whatever else you carry, pens, um, pocketing on the outside part of the bag. And again, you can see how just huge it is, how much you can fit in there. Altogether, it stays very put. Like, you you pull it up by the handles and all of a sudden it's just like a nice semi-structured bag. You put it down, it's nice and soft. But the construction of the bottom really allows it to retain the rectangular shape on the bottom. Now I have to talk about silk. Um, I love silk. I wear a lot of silk. And uh, I have to mention a couple of pieces that I picked up in silk um, for the spring season. First of all, this one I already had worn. This is a sleeveless blouse by Equipment. Mine is in a small. I really like Equipment. Equipment and Jouy, one of the pieces I'll be talking about in a minute, make an exceptionally lovely velvety silk. So silk can come in different finishes. Um, the shiny, satiny, the finishes that are sort of slippery, I don't really love. I don't love against my skin something that's going to slide around, something that doesn't feel secure and doesn't feel cozy. Um, silks from Equipment and some of the other brands I'll probably mention at some point or later, they are a velvety, beautiful, just really quality materials. Um, this particular one is in this ballerina piggy pink, but in a very, very light shade um, with matching buttons. And this is a beautiful, beautiful piece for a working woman, easy to wear, flat flap pockets in the front. It's not really see-through, surprisingly. Um, that's another thing I really like about uh, silks from uh, equipment. They aren't transparent. This is something that is very irritating in all shirts, not just silk shirts, but silk shirts are particularly bad about not being transparent. So here we have a pleat that opens wide in the bottom. And my favorite feature of all shirts and t-shirts ever made is this sort of rise on the sides. So it's a bit longer in the front and in the back and to the sides you have this little scoop which is extremely flattering for the hips and of course it's hand wash and you have to use specific silk wash. I own so much silk that it's sort of not a big deal for me. I just do a bunch of silks at the same time and hand wash them. It takes me about 10 minutes and then lay them out to dry or hang them up to dry actually on hangers is what I do. So um, equipment silk in general and this particular shirt, um, I bought at the big, I believe it was about $100, maybe 120, but um, equipment silk is worth it. It wears quite well. Another silk piece I wanted to mention are those beautiful palazzo pants. And I have to say that um, uh, white, white legged pants, especially flowy ones are another trend that uh, is going to be huge this season. And this is such a classic, piece that you can really take it outside of the trend and wear it as a basic piece. Um, this is a sort of mix between terracotta and pink, but I still wanted to include it. Um, it's a wonderful wide-legged um, silk trouser from Jouy. Let's see, here is the name of the brand if you're interested. Again, I have it in a small, this one was 298. Um, so Jouy silk is also quite expensive, but it has the same wonderful sort of um, velvety quality. You can probably even see how nicely it falls. It drapes really beautifully. Um, the folds are all very soft. It's a very flattering kind of silk to wear. It, it's very opaque, therefore you cannot see through it. Another problem with a lot of pants. Um, is that and, and skirts as well is that you know you, you order them and you get them and boom you can see your underwear not so with Jouy um, the silk is nice and uh, opaque the weave is really beautiful it catches the light in a lovely lovely velvety way 
Um, the construction of these is such that you imagine that you're wearing pajamas when you're wearing those. Um, because I already own some of these pants in different colors from Dre, I have to say that uh, these are very, very comfortable. Um, it has an elasticated back, but from the front it looks like actual pants with a fly. Of course it doesn't open, it's just an illusion. Um, it has a very nice and deep pockets in the front. It has back pockets. Those are sewn shut and that's a good thing for me. I'm not going to open them because I don't really use back pockets in my pants anyway. So I prefer for them to stay pristine and not sag and, you know, booty is a sensitive area. The pockets need to stay nice and flat. So again, this is a really wide pant. You can see how much material is there. Therefore, it looks quite luxe on. And of course, the material being quite a luxe material, it, that's what it looks like. It looks uh, very, very nice. It, it has a lot of length. If you're tall, you actually will be able to let that out about maybe even up to one and a half inches or so. For me, because I am 5'3", these are quite long, so I will have to take them to a tailor to sort of, um, you know, make them appropriate for my height. But I am uh, loving them enough to, to actually do it. Um, so these are such a wonderful find, very, very luxe, wonderful material and super flattering. Lovely, lovely choice. I want to just show you what I mean by wearing tonal outfits, meaning that head to toe you're kind of wearing the same color. So for this one, let's imagine the pants with uh, the light pink shirt with, say, slides that look beige compared to those two colors, but they're actually very dusty pink. Um, and complete with, say, the Skagen bag. So again, this doesn't look insane. It doesn't look crazy or nasty or weird. It just looks like you've put a lot of effort into coming up with your outfit, although everything is just super comfortable and pajama-like. Trust me, when you're wearing those pants, that shirt, and the freaking slippers, <laughs> you know, you're gonna feel like you're wearing PJs at work, but you're gonna look extremely put together. One thing that I have to mention when you, whenever you're picking things to sort of add to your wardrobe on a more permanent basis, um, I would really recommend looking at materials primarily and then craftsmanship. If the material looks luxe, if it is a luxe, wonderful material, if it's a beautiful silk, a simplest, the simplest cut is going to just make it look fantastic and it's going to elevate your outfit instead of cheapen it if uh, you are having a piece that is maybe polyester. Polyester can be really beautiful actually. You just have to make sure to feel for it and to look how it drapes on the body. Silk, cashmere, wool, those are no-brainers. Those are easy, you know, you, you see those, you know they're going to drape beautifully. Um, synthetic materials are a little bit less uh, likely to conform to your body quite as well as natural materials. The last piece that I wanted to go over is uh, the new jeans that I bought. And these are like a peachy pink sort of color. Um, again, will go wonderfully, say, with flats and uh, a simple white shirt. Uh, really easy to wear color. Um, these are from Rag & Bone. I do like Rag & Bone denim because it has this combination that I like also in diesel jeans. Um, that being that the denim isn't like thin enough to show every ripple you have in your booty, but it's so nice and flexible that it's super, super comfy to wear. So uh, it needs to be just right. You know, the Goldilocks, right? It can't be too thick because then it's going to be stiff and uncomfortable to bend your knees in and your hips. And then it needs to be sort of thick enough and have enough support that it wears nicely. It doesn't disintegrate after a few washes it, and it doesn't so, sort of unflatter you by showing off every bit of cellulite all of us do have probably maybe some of the lucky ones don't yet so this rag and bone pair is um quite flattering they're basic skinnies um i can get away with wearing skinny jeans in a non-jean colors to work um, my work environment can be casual enough to allow for that 
Um, but I, I wouldn't do blue jeans, maybe black jeans or maybe something colored like that that would suggest that they're pants rather than jeans. They are mid-rise, they come just below my belly button. The pockets were really good size and they were sitting nicely where they're supposed to. One thing that I didn't like was the fact that it didn't have that very flattering V-cut and stitch at the back that I really like in jeans. They just carve out the butt much nicer that way. This is a straight across cut, so it's not as flattering as it could be. I think they could have gone that way and it would have been better, but nevertheless, they sit nicely on me, so uh, who am I to complain? And uh, they're a nice length. There's no distressing, any kind of fraying, anything like that. Therefore, they're appropriate for most situations. So that's what I have in terms of uh, powdery pink and dusty pink trend that is quite prominent right now. And these are the pieces that I really felt were worth of maybe trying out a trend that you didn't think you would. And here you go. Now you can. Um, this trend is very wearable. It's wearable for a professional woman. It's wearable for a mom. I'm both of those things and um, I think that this is an easy one. It's a no-brainer to pull out of the hat of your tricks and try for this season. That's it for today. Have a good day. See you later. Bye-bye.